Okay, so I'd like to take a moment and thank Jill and Leslie and all the folks at Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center and eExtension for uh, giving us the opportunity to talk about a project we're very excited about, the Nutrient Recycling Challenge here at EPA. Um, as Jill introduced me, I am Joseph Ziober and work in the Water Permits Division in the Office of Wastewater Management at the US EPA at headquarters. Uh, and moving to our first slide, uh, I just want to briefly uh, touch on a couple points. Uh, even though I do work in a regulatory office that is responsible for implementation of the national NPDES, the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System program for concentrated animal feeding operations, um, in addition to our regulatory work here in our office, we do have a number of voluntary initiatives underway. And uh, this diagram just shows you the four prongs of our initiative. And the goal of all of our voluntary projects is really to open up a dialogue with animal agriculture stakeholders to develop concrete partnership projects that we can work on with egg stakeholders. Uh, and a third area of focus is practices and technologies. Um, we like to stay abreast of uh, the newest technologies that are coming out, tried and true best management practices, um, so we can able, be able to share that information uh, with our animal agriculture uh, stakeholders and other colleagues. And finally, um, better information. Uh, and what this amounts to is uh, essentially we see there's a great opportunity for uh, animal agriculture stakeholders to um, give us information about their production systems. And we at EPA have an opportunity to share information about uh, the Clean Water Act requirements and best management practices. Um, so altogether, uh, we feel that this general approach to collaborating with the animal ag industry um, gives us an opportunity to engage with animal ag stakeholders in a way that hasn't necessarily happened historically in the agency, uh, and we're very excited about this line of work. Um, ultimately, the goal of our partnership projects with the animal ag industry is to improve water quality through these partnership projects. Um, but we really want to make sure that we're doing, uh, we're thinking of projects in a way that makes sense for not only us in terms of our goals and improving water quality, but also um, that we're sensitive to and attuned to the needs of the animal egg stakeholders. So today we are going to talk about a partnership project, the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, and this just gives you an overview of what the project is. In 2015, EPA partnered with USDA, Pork and Dairy Producers, the World Wildlife Fund, and a number of environmental and scientific experts to host the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, which is a competition to find affordable technologies that recycle nitrogen and or phosphorus from livestock manure and create valuable products. On slide number four, this gives you a bit of insight into how the project got started. So back in early 2015, senior management here in the Office of Water um, kind of came to us in our branch and asked us the question, you know, we've been hearing a lot about these innovative technologies that are out there that can recover nutrients and they have the potential to offer environmental and economic benefits. Um, so what are these technologies? What do they look like? Are they really um, far enough along in terms of their stages of development that producers might be using these technologies? Are there any installed on the ground that have been up and running for a while that we can actually have some data from? Um, so these are just kind of general questions posed to us by our senior management. And in response, we went out and we essentially started doing some of our, research, our own research in-house, um, scouring the journals and just looking for uh, peer-reviewed literature on nutrient recovery technologies, case studies, um, any pilot demonstrations that we could come across. Um, but we also thought it was very important to uh, open up a conversation with animal egg stakeholders who are out there working in animal production systems in the field and kind of ask them, uh, you know, have you seen these technologies? Um, if you're environmental managers at integrators or work for dairy cooperatives as an environmental manager, have you seen these technologies? So we started having these conversations and ultimately uh, we had a, a group kind of just naturally form um, that we've since dubbed our planning committee in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. And our planning committee is made up of about 19 uh, different organizations. And in just a moment, I'll, I'll show you a slide that shows you who those organizations are. Um, but these are essentially um, folks that we consider to be relatively key stakeholders um, out there who know something about nutrient recovery technologies and have an interest uh, in advancing those technologies when and if that's appropriate. Um, in our initial research into nutrient recovery technologies, uh, we identified some primary barriers to more widespread use and adoption, and 
the primary ones that sort of rose to the top were that the technologies uh, were characterized by high capital operations and maintenance costs. Uh, there were immature or non-existent markets for the nutrient and fiber products that those systems could produce. Uh, in many cases, there's a high degree of system complexity, um, perhaps, you know, a, a very complex system that producers might not be able to manage and also still do all the other things they were doing at the, end, uh, the beginning of the day. Um, and finally, that and this is a very important point, that the end users of the technology or the co-products uh, were not necessarily directly influencing the type of R&D that was happening in the area of these technology systems. Um, ultimately, we developed the Nutrient Recycling Challenge uh, as a means to try uh, to address some of these challenges uh, to the extent possible. And we really wanted to draw and uh, sort of refocus the conversation and highlight the importance of uh, market considerations and the needs of the end users uh, when innovators are undergoing their R&D activities. Slide number five, you will see the partners in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. As I mentioned, 19 organizations are involved in the effort currently. Um, actually, uh, I should add, we haven't updated this. Um, uh, very recently, the Department of Energy came on board as a partner, um, so it is now 20. Uh, and you can see there that this is kind of a wide smattering of different organizations, but you'll see that what we tried to do is get the relevant stakeholders, people who had some knowledge of nutrient recovery systems and also had direct access to uh, the constituent, their constituent members. Um, for example, the large dairy cooperatives who um, you know, sort of had dealings with a, a wide number of producers. We wanted to get as much producer perspective as possible, so it seemed kind of intuitive to us to bring in those uh, large dairy cooperatives. We're working on the swine side with uh, Tyson, Smithfield Foods, and a smaller outfit out of Ohio called Cooper Farms. Um, you'll notice that we're uh, working with Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy. Uh, and then on the federal side, as I mentioned, DOE and the U.S. Department of Agriculture has been a, a key player, um, as well as some, some other outfits. Um, but the goal uh, in sort of forming this group was really to try to get as many diverse perspectives as possible. Um, you see American Biogas Council, for example, uh, many of the nutrient recovery technologies that we came across in our research had some sort of connection to uh, anaerobic digesters. Maybe they uh, or an add-on to an anaerobic digester system. Uh, so, given the the research, given that research you know, sort of seemed to go hand in hand in some cases, digestion research and nutrient recovery research, we wanted to make sure to have that perspective represented. Um, so, we think we did a pretty good job of uh, getting together a group to represent all those diverse perspectives and ultimately give us the greatest chance of success. On slide number six. We've listed the goals of the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, and a primary goal of this project is to accelerate the development of nutrient recovery technologies, specifically for pork and dairy farms at this point, uh, that can yield environmental and economic benefits. Uh, one note on the pork and dairy. Uh, in this initial run of the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, we focus on pork and dairy simply because, uh, in many instances, those uh, systems are handled as wet manure systems, and we just kind of viewed it as a a rather low-hanging fruit in the sense that we knew one of the challenges that producers were trying to overcome, both dairy and pork producers, is in cases where there may be too many nutrients relative to the amount of land on which those nutrients can be applied, um, they're really looking for some solutions, how to get the weight down, how to get the volume down, and be able to transport those nutrients as a greater distance more economically. Um, second, we wanted to use this challenge as an opportunity to increase general awareness of issues and opportunities related to nutrients and manure management. Third, we wanted to be able to connect innovators, people who are actually doing R&D in the area of nutrient recovery technology, to animal agriculture stakeholders, as well as other innovators. And finally, uh, a parallel effort in this challenge is, you know, even though the R&D and the acceleration of actual development of technologies is kind of the primary focus, we realized that this effort wouldn't have that much chance of success if it weren't in parallel considering how we can stimulate the markets for the products generated by these nutrient recovery technology systems. As I mentioned before, um, we had come across some examples where even though a technology was up and running, um, because of the fact that the markets for those co-products were immature and non-developed, uh, ultimately it was, you know, a system was producing a product that contained nitrogen or phosphorus, it was sterile perhaps, it was lightweight, low volume, however, it just couldn't compete with some of those already uh, commercially available products out there. On slide number seven, you'll see the four phases of the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. The concept phase, phase one, launched in late November of 2015. Um, it was a, we opened a submission period for 60 days. 
uh, and that submission period closed on January 15th of 2016. After those submissions came in, we used the voluntary judging panel to uh, judge those submissions and ultimately chose some winners, and I'll, I'll go into that a bit more in a moment. Um, so phase one ended uh, sort of ceremoniously in March, late March of 2016 with a summit. I'll also give you some more details about that summit uh, just a little bit later. Um, so after March of 2016, we reconvened with the planning committee and right now we are in uh, phase two territory technology designs. Uh, so the general flow of this competition is meant to walk from technology concepts to designs to prototypes and ultimately we hope to demonstrations on actual uh, Darien swine operations. As you can see uh, the prototypes we see that taking place uh, probably later next year out into 2017 and uh, finally the demonstrations sometime beyond that. Um, initially when we came out with our challenge we had a, a very constricted timeline and uh, we weren't necessarily trying to adhere to that and we don't want to rush anything or force anything um, so we are pretty malleable uh, we've learned a lot from our innovators in terms of what sort of time they need to bring their uh, technologies to the next stage of development, and we're sensitive to that and pretty flexible in terms of our ability to reschedule according to the needs of those uh, innovators who are participating in our challenge. On slide number eight, you will see the criteria that we came out with for phase one, the concept phase. And this was what we posted to the world uh, in late November of 2015. Uh, I will say that in working with our planning committee uh, to develop the criteria for the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, at the onset we actually had some suspicion that uh, if we, for example, approached the environmental managers of very large swine uh, integrators and asked them, what would you like to see? You know, if, if you could have a technology that would work for a lot of your operations, uh, you know, how much phosphorus would you want it to recover? How much nitrogen? What sort of co-products would you need that technology to spit out in order to be economic for you? And we kind of had a, a thought that we'd get some rather prescriptive criteria. However, in talking to the planning committee on both the dairy and the swine side, um, and as a group together, ultimately uh, our planning committee felt very strongly about the fact that in the early stages, in the concept stage particularly, uh, it would be good if we came out with rather general criteria to cast the net as widely as possible so that we could get as many interesting ideas for nutrient recovery technologies in as possible. And rather than thinking about it as a strict, we want to identify the best, award those best submissions, money, uh, seed funding, whatever the case may be. Uh, we actually view it as an opportunity to look at areas of need and try to work with the innovators and, and ask them to identify, you know, what are, what are some data points that I really need and I'm just missing or uh, how can I better report on the economics or even begin to understand the economics of manure management on actual dairy and swine operations. So rather than just trying to say someone's better than another person, we, we see it as an opportunity to say, we want to give all of these innovators an opportunity to tap into the collective expertise of our planning committee and, and a number of other extension volunteers um, so that they can develop technologies that have the best chance of working in the real world. With that said, you'll see that our very basic criteria is that the technology would need to cover nitrogen and or phosphorus from dairy or swine manure and do so in a cost-effective manner. And in addition to the primary criteria, we also included uh, eight desirable characteristics that we're not necessarily encouraging innovators to focus on any of these things, but we just wanted them to be conscious of the fact that there are some very important ancillary benefits that these technology systems can provide, and to what extent they were able to, we asked them to just identify if those technologies that they were working on uh, would address some of these concerns. You can see here we have things like uh, the ability to separate liquid and solid streams, um, and, and we're particularly interested in those sort of benefits that can potentially reduce operating costs and dairy or swine operations. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that uh, those innovators were conscious of you know, whether or not those technologies were farmer friendly and if there's an opportunity for replicability and scalability or even portability. So we put the criteria out to the world. And as I mentioned a moment ago, we got in some concept papers, and I'll get in a little more into the, uh, the exact numbers in a moment, uh, and then we judge those concept papers. 
Uh, here I've listed out the judges in phase one of the nutrient recycling challenge. Uh, we made sure that each of the submissions that were coming in were reviewed by a diversity of judges from multiple perspectives. So again, we wanted to make sure that, yes, the, the submission should be reviewed by uh, a biological or ecological engineer, uh, someone of that ilk, um, but also that there were producer perspectives represented uh, and representatives from uh, trade associations and environmental organizations as well. Um, you'll notice down in the lower right-hand uh, corner a number of folks from uh, various universities who have done specific research into nutrient recovery technologies were on our judging panel, and one of our partners in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge is the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers, and they very generously uh, reached out to a number of their members and uh, asked them if they had any interest in participating in the judging process for the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, and we had uh, several individuals uh, generously offer their time. So on slide number 10, you'll see a slide entitled, Phase 1, How Did It Go? In phase one, we received 75 submissions from around the world. And in the course of the submission, when the submission period was open for those 60 days, uh, we had quite a few number of uh, media stories come out and cover the nutrient recycling challenge. Um, and it ultimately turned out to be one of the most popular federal challenges on challenge.gov while open. Um, I will just say a quick note on challenge.gov. Um, there was a general push uh, in this administration uh, to embrace open innovation and crowdsourcing uh, these prize competitions and challenges as a means of uh, spurring innovation and trying to solve some of the most uh, challenging environmental problems um, out there. And there's a lot of support for, for uh, these types of challenges across the federal government right now. And challenge.gov is essentially a clearinghouse where all of the challenges that federal agencies run uh, post their challenges on challenge.gov. In the lower left corner, you'll see a map. Uh, we used a contractor, a company called Inocentive, helped us administer phase one of the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. And uh, this is uh, some of their data that they shared with us. Uh, and you can see on this map, there's a number of little uh, pins uh, across from across the globe. Uh, and these indicate uh, locations where submissions were received from. And uh, there's one big pin in, in United States out of the 75, uh, probably about 35 or so. Um, we're actually from the United States. We had a number of submissions from Europe, a couple from Africa, Australia, Asia. Um, so we were really pleased. Um, from the beginning, we knew that there was a lot of uh, exciting innovation happening uh, across the globe, and we didn't want to necessarily limit ourselves to the United States alone. Uh, we wanted to, to reach out as globally as possible, and uh, we got some very interesting ideas from across the globe. On slide number 11, you'll see the concepts uh, invited into phase two of the challenge. Uh, there were 34 out of the 75 were selected to proceed on into phase two. There's a general sense in this challenge that as time goes on, there will be fewer and fewer contestants. Um, but as I mentioned, we didn't necessarily just want to pick the cream of the crop in this round. We wanted to use round one as, uh, as an opportunity to get in as many exciting ideas as possible and then help innovators refine those ideas. Here you'll see the top four winning concepts. Uh, we did award a total of $30,000 in cash prizes to the top 10 innovators. And uh, very quickly, I'll just uh, say a few words about each of the, the top four that came in. Uh, slurry separation uh, with Coanda FX separator. Um, this is a uh, concept that actually came to us from Uganda. And uh, the innovator in this case proposes a new technology uh, that essentially uh, reduces, uh, it's a means of reducing energy inputs and dramatically reducing operating costs of centrifuge technology to get out those finer phosphorus particles. Um, the second technology, manure converter, that came to us from Israel, uh, and this innovator uh, proposed a technology to rapidly turn uh, manure into a sterile ash fertilizer. Third, uh, you'll see producing nutrients concentrated biosolids via a-N-S-B-E-A-R-S, uh, and this came from a team out of University of Minnesota, and it was a proposal to uh, create a dry biosolids fertilizer using a novel anaerobic digestion and solid liquid separation system. And finally, the fourth removal of dissolved NMP from livestock manure by air stripping. Uh, this particular innovation uh, proposes a means of using CO2 rather than chemical inputs uh, to produce a struvite and other uh, fertilizers from animal manure. 
On the next slide, slide number 12, you will see uh, the six others that were invited in. I won't spend too much time talking about these. All of these are up on our website at www.nutrientrecyclingchallenge.org. And uh, on the last slide of this presentation, you'll see that web address as well as our contact information. To give you a quick breakdown of what the technologies looked like, uh, we had about 62% that said they would work on both, uh, both swine and dairy operations, 29 specifically for dairy and 9% specifically for swine. Um, the technologies that came in uh, applied to large and small farms um, sort of across the board, some just small, some just large, some could be scaled up to any size. Uh, and in the lower right corner, you'll see that pretty much all of the technology treatment classes um, possible uh, were represented in our challenge. We had mecha mechanical, biological, chemical, thermal, and hybrid systems proposed. On slide number 14, you will see a listing of the types of fertilizer and or fiber products that can be produced by these systems, and I should also include energy products. Um, so quite a number of products uh, that can be produced, uh, ranging from NNP fertilizers, some novel fertilizers, and tried and true fertilizers like superphosphate, um, all the way through to some worm castings and various peat moss substitutes. And we even had some proposals that uh, looked at creating animal feedstuffs, uh, crude protein, uh, and in some rare cases, uh, technologies that took manure all the way to reusable clean water. Slide number 15, Let's say a little bit more about the summit I referenced earlier at the end of phase one. Uh, March 30th to 31st in Washington, D.C., we invited the 34 innovators uh, who were selected to proceed on into phase two of the challenge to Washington, D.C., to a two-day summit. Uh, the first day was held at the White House uh, Executive Office Building, and the second day at World Wildlife Fund headquarters here in D.C. Uh, we had an award ceremony where we actually gave out some cash, um, but more importantly, this uh, forum was set, uh, this summit was set up to be a forum where the innovators could come in and meet the planning committee uh, and you know, have a frank conversation about what their needs are uh, as potential end users of the technologies. And we also wanted to use this summit as an opportunity to give the innovators a chance to just say a little bit more in a public forum about the technologies that they're working on uh, and connect with other innovators in federal uh, agency challenges and other types of challenges like XPRIZE, um, there's a, a strong teaming component that's really emphasized and encouraged. Uh, and what we wanted to do is just create an atmosphere where these folks could mingle, talk with each other, and see if maybe they could strengthen their ideas by actually partnering up with other folks, uh, or if they could have some conversations with the end users and, and ultimately refine and tweak their concepts a little bit. Um, so we did give them an opportunity at the summit to present on their actual technologies. And one of the very cool things that happened at the summit was as innovators were presenting on their technologies. Um, other innovators in the room were standing up and saying things like, you know, I, I see you're trying to use a membrane of, uh, with this, of this size and grade, and maybe you should be considering a different one, or, you know, maybe you're using a chemical membrane. Have you considered a steel membrane? And just real, real life feedback happening, um, very specific to their, their technologies. Um, and you started to get the sense at the summit that there was definitely uh, a lot of energy in the room and that it wasn't so much about competition as I need to beat you in order to get the big prize at the end, um, but more about, you know, this is a problem that a lot of us have been working on to try to solve for a long time to make economically uh, viable nutrient recovery technologies that will make it into the marketplace. Um, and I think, you know, in some respects, we can do that better as a team uh, rather than being cutthroat. So it was a, a very productive summit, and, uh, and we think the innovators got quite a bit out of it. Uh, very quickly on slide 16, I just wanted to uh, mention a blog that came out very recently, uh, in, actually in early August, uh, out of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. Uh, the Office of Science and Technology Policy, Policy has been a, a very uh, important supporter of not only the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, but a number of other nutrient-related uh, prize competitions that are going on uh, across a number of federal agencies and other organizations, including universities and nonprofits. Um, so each of these challenges you'll see on this page just kind of is looking to uh, address some specific facet of a nutrient-related challenge out there. And uh, I included the link on the right-hand side of the page. I would encourage you to just take a look at that if you have a chance. So that brings us to phase two, where we currently are. Uh, to give you the quick facts on phase two, 
Phase two is going to be a non-competitive phase, and the primary purpose of phase two is to support innovators as they develop technology designs based on the concept papers they submitted in phase one. Uh, this phase is scheduled to begin in October of 2016, so very soon. The competition will only be open to those 34 teams that we selected in phase one, and the goal is to have innovators finalize their technology designs and their teams by March of 2017, uh, ultimately for entry into phase three, the prototype phase. Uh, and right now we are currently working with our 20 organization planning committee uh, to work out the details of phase two. We have made a preliminary announcement to the 34 innovators and given them some information on what phase two will look like. Um, and we're just going to take just a few more weeks to refine the program elements and ultimately um, we'll update our website, uh, our public facing website, as well as bring the innovators together with our planning committee for some conversations um, in the next month. On slide 18, you will see our primary elements of the phase two program. And as I mentioned, our goal is to really support innovators as they develop technology designs. And we wanna do that in a couple of primary ways. Uh, first, we'd like to provide technical assistance webinars to the innovators uh, on a variety of topics ranging from how do you develop a technology design, how can you assess the cost of manure management, how can you assess the value of the co-products that your system produces, uh, what are the nuances of the various manure handling systems that are out there, and what are some potential funding sources you can tap into as you're developing your technologies. Um, we heard from the innovators that it was very important uh, that they have some face-to-face -face time with actual producers and end users of the technologies. Uh, some of our innovators in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge come from other sectors like the industrial or municipal waste treatment sector uh, and haven't necessarily worked on uh, animal manure before. So while their technologies are certainly, while their technologies could work on manure, um, they need to be tweaked and refined and they need to understand some of those nuances um, in, in pork and dairy production. So what we're going to do is arrange uh, a number of field days and opportunities for innovators to go out and visit uh, pork and dairy farms and, uh, and see manure management systems in the works. And finally, uh, you can see a couple of other boxes there and uh, they're, they're certainly important, but the last one I wanna just draw some attention to is the uh, individual feedback. What we're doing in phase two of the Nutrient Recycling Challenge is uh, getting together a roster of individuals who are essentially volunteering their time and these are individuals from uh, universities, from our planning committee, some of our judges, uh, livestock producers, uh, and a number of folks who have generously offered up their time to sort of be put on a roster and schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments with the innovators as needed. Um, if the innovator is working through a technology design and they come across some sort of challenge, like they're having trouble calculating the cost of manure management or they're having trouble understanding you know, how manure differs a little bit from one season to the next, they can get in touch with some of our extension university experts um, and ask those questions so that they develop very robust technology designs before they move into the prototype phase. So, in getting towards the end, uh, Ag Extension, we'd like to thank you all for your support. Uh, I know a number of you on, on the call have been involved uh, in some way, shape, or form with the challenge. Uh, we actually did a very early uh, kind of scoping um, exercise at the, the last Waste to Worth conference out in Seattle um, in April of 2015, and uh, saw a number of you there. and. Uh, Again, thank you for all your support so far. Uh, how can Ag Extension continue to help? Uh, I should say that the Nutrient Recycling Challenge and the Planning Committee, it's never meant to be locked in stone. Um, this has always been an evolving and ever-evolving and iterative process. So we're certainly not closed up in terms of folks who want to be involved uh, in the challenge. There are plenty of opportunities to get involved. So if you have any ideas for future phases and how they might best play out, um, please let us know. You'll see my contact information, as I mentioned, soon. Um, we always appreciate help spreading the word, just letting, as you're out there on farms, letting people know what we're doing, letting other egg extension experts know what we're doing, uh, and put them in touch with us. Uh, if you have any links to potential partners, investors, funders, or ideas for sort of how to best tackle the economic side of this piece, please let us know. And uh, I had mentioned uh, that we were providing sort of a roster of uh, experts uh, that we'll make available to the participants in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. If you'd like to volunteer for that, please let us know. And finally, uh, if you have any suggestions or uh, locations you'd like to suggest for any field days, uh, we are most appreciative. 
Finally, last slide, you'll see our website, nutrientrecyclingchallenge.org. Uh, you'll find uh, up-to-date information uh, on the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, as well as uh, information about Phase 1, and you can see a snapshot of the submissions that came in in Phase 1. I'm posted there on the Nutrient Recycling Challenge website. Um, and that is my office, the Office of Wastewater Management, and you'll see that uh, my colleague, Hema Subramanian, and I, uh, both of our email addresses are there. And uh, I will just give a shout out to my colleague. She is out touring some agriculture operations in California today and could not join, um, but she is my partner in crime and uh, the other staff lead on this project, and uh, it's great to work with.